Shinichiro Watanabe is a pretty interesting guy, and easily one of the more unique and, well, one of the best anime directors working today, really, in my opinion at least. And, well, part of that's because he has a very unique style to him, and, well, a lot of his anime has been really targeted towards the West, more than Japan itself, which is pretty different. Well, his work itself is just very, well, it speaks for itself. I mean, we've had Bounty Hunters in Space with a lot of jazz music in the background. We've had some ways in hip hop. Yeah, that, that actually blends together pretty well. And we also have a dandy guy in space, because who doesn't love space dandy? But today we're taking a look at his, well, latest enemy work. And it's a very different and much more serious one in general. And that would be Terror and Resonance. So, without further ado, let's go. Our story centers around the characters 9 and 12, whose names aren't very subtle when you think about it, as they form the group known as Sphinx, where they, well, terrorize Japan by blowing up buildings. But here's the curious thing, and before they, well, blow up the buildings, they upload a video to YouTube for the police to see, where they warn of the bomb and, well, give away a riddle of where the bomb could possibly be so the police could possibly grab it. But if the bomb does go off, then the building it's in, well, gets evacuated long beforehand, meaning that, well, people still get injured, no one actually dies. Which adds just, well, a lot of moral ambiguity to it, on what these two characters intend to do by blowing up all these buildings. And then to top it all off, a classmate of theirs from the school they transferred into, Lisa Mishima, well, well, Lisa has a bit of a hard life, and, well, just a very, well, obsessive mother. And... Things are about to get a lot more complicated for her when she wants to troll when they're about to blow up their first building. And then is left with the choice of either dying where she stands or becoming an accomplice. And realizing she doesn't want to die, she agrees to become the accomplice. And thus begins a long and troubled tale of, well, buildings blowing up, a lot of intrigue, a certain police detective named Shibazaki trying to figure out what these guys want, and the Americans getting involved, there's an FBI agent named Five who has a bit of a past with these two, so that's to also go after them herself. And, well, things are going to be very complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the plot of Term Resonance moves at its own fast pace, and being only 11 episodes long, it more or less works out. We only get to know as much about these characters and plots as we honestly need to, and anything else is more or less unnecessary. But if there's one thing about the main plot that people like to complain about the most, it's the introduction of Five and the claims that her introduction to the story and just her general influence on the plot up until the end is what degraded the quality of the show. And I honestly don't agree with that. Because up until her introduction, there's just a lot of cat and mouse games between the police and Sphinx that were just kind of repetitive. But her introduction to the story, she really shook things up, she really made things even bigger in terms of conflict, and really challenged 9 and 12 massively. And really contributed to just the whole backstory and their history with her, and just made the whole show even even more better. And I honestly don't think that the show, well, degraded in quality whatsoever, I thought it stayed pretty consistent all the way through. Just, yeah, pretty damn great. The only downside is that not all the characters get as much attention as they really deserve, and their roles kind of just get diminished a bit. Take for example Lisa. Despite being, well, hired as an accomplice, well, she doesn't actually get to do that much accomplice work. And some would argue that she doesn't really contribute all that much to the show in general, and is generally useless. And that's something I still don't agree with whatsoever because her relationship with Twelve is pretty well done and just really indicative of their characters and their just general lives. And well, more or less works out in the end. But even then, I kind of hoped that Lisa would play still a bit more of a bigger role in terms of Sphinx's plots and all, being an accomplice that they forcibly, well, kind of jumped on over this. But beggars can't be choosers. The animation by Studio Map is pretty damn amazing, and this being from a studio made by one of the co-founders of Madhouse, it's to be expected, really. I mean, from the beautiful backgrounds, insane scenes of buildings getting blown up, and well, just mixing this in with Watanabe's direction just adds to this feeling that it's not really an average TV anime, but like a full-on cinematic movie. Just from the way things are shot to how things go in and out of focus, it's just insanely gorgeous and beautiful, and just, well, pretty damn great. And the soundtrack by Yoko Kano, who's worked with Watanabe a lot of times, including his very classic show, Cowboy Bebop, is also equally as amazing. Just, well pretty damn amazing and badass, and just all the tracks are pretty memorable, and even the opening and endings are just pretty damn great too, and it's just, it's basically like a pretty perfect soundtrack in general, I mean, just go listen to it, seriously, just beautiful. If there's anything to be said about Walton Lovey's shows, is that pretty much all of them have pretty amazing dubs in general, to the point where even Cowboy Bebop is considered to be the benchmark for amazing and perfect dubs, 
and Terran Resonance keeps up this streak. Funimation's dub is just amazing in general, and all of everyone involved just really shows how much they care. I mean, Chris Bevins, who does the ADR directing and voicing 9, and the speakers 12, Jade Saxton as Lisa, Robin McCollum as Shibazaki, and Jimmy Markey as 5. They're all amazing and pretty damn great, and just act these well so well. And just listening to the commentaries on the disc and even the 20 minute interview with some of the actors, they just show how much they care about the show and how they can really get into its themes. And just, it's, well, it's pretty much all the makings of a great dub with people who really care about the source material. And, oh, it's just amazing, so, well, just go listen to it. Overall, Turn Resonance is a, well, not a perfect show, but it's still a pretty damn good one, and a pretty good gateway anime too, so to speak. Just all the elements of art, animation, plot, characters, the soundtrack, the dub, mixed in with Rotten Lobby's amazing direction. It just makes to create a pretty attractive show, well, an attractive package, really, and one that I heartily recommend that you go watch. So, yeah. Just want to give a special thanks to uh, Madman for, for providing me the DVD for me to review. Because that's pretty awesome of you guys, as you probably saw in my unboxing video. And until next time, where I'll be doing another review, an unboxing, or whatever else there is, well, cheerio.